Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. Thanks for joining me for this live stream. It's been a long while since I've streamed live. If you can hear me, please say hi and let me know how the audio sounds on your end. Um, I've updated my my OS maybe a couple of times since the last time I live streamed, so um, I don't I don't know if it's working. I'll just give it a minute just to see if anybody's there listening. Um, just say hi if you're there. Well, um, while that's happening, hey, KY, thank you. Um, while that's happening, while you guys are logging in, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about this. F for the past, I would say, year and a half, um, there's this guy who has a YouTube channel named Bridge Capper. He's a big Sonic, sh Sonic the Hedgehog fan, and he has taken a lot of his fav favorite themes and asked me to rework them. Uh, now we go back and forth and he tells me I think it would sound better if you had this instrument here if the instrument did this and it's been a pretty cool process um, working with video game music cool hi Roma and I want to show you how um, what my process is for for uh, reworking this music for him now it's a, it is a collaborative work so I take music that's already been created and I get his ideas so he tells me what kind of instruments he wants uh, he's very specific so um, I, I, I like his ideas too so here I have a, a piece from Sonic the Hedgehog it's Mad Gear Zone Act 3 the first thing I do is I import the audio and then I have a zoom call with him where he goes over the different instruments that he wants and we go over sounds um, sounds that he has in his head and then he, he'll tell me yeah that's the right one so I like to start off with basic basic stuff so right now I have um, I have superior drummer and he wanted a very heavy sound I think something that sounds like it's in, a, in an arena well that one doesn't really sound like it's in an arena but But it has a big sound. I may change some things depending on how it sounds afterward, if it's not really cutting through the mix or if it doesn't sound big enough. So that's Superior Drummer. I don't know what this is. You know what? Actually, I think we had landed on this one right here. This is uh, AR80's Black Kit by um, from Abbey Road 80's Drummer. I think this is the one he liked. Yeah. And then Ample Metal Eclipse because he wanted a heavy rhythm sound. And then Ample Guitar LP. This may change. I may use other guitars. It depends on um, it depends depends on how it fits and the melody. There's a lot of factors. And then he wanted a big church organ. And I'm using. Vienna organ player. Now this one, <laughs> I bought it and I've literally never used it before. Um, I love the the samples, but there you go. And then a metal bass. If you're joining, um, thanks for joining. All right, so first thing I do, well, next thing I do is I get the tempo. And in this case, I already found out the tempo, but I'm going to show you my process. I do have an app on my phone, a tempo app, where I tap along and I get the rough estimate of what the tempo is. But in this case, it's pretty easy. So I can see the little peaks. Oops, sorry. I can see the little peaks in the audio where I can tell that that's a beat. So I'm going to I'm going to play it for you real quick. So I don't even have to go far. Right here this is the, the second measure. So what I want to do is adjust the tempo so that it aligns with the bar. So um I know this is above 120, so I'm going to start dragging it up.
And in the case of video game music, a lot of times they'll um, they'll use even numbers or really simple numbers. Not all the time, but a lot of times. I did do tempo detect on here. This is another option. I don't usually use it. Tempo detection. The reason I don't always use it is because sometimes the songs uh, it'll detect variances in the or very yeah variances in the tempo. So I'm going to press analyze. And then when we go to our tempo track, we'll see that there's all these different tempos. Oops. So 156, 162, 159, 158. So about the average would be 160. So I'm going to drag this up to 160 and then play it. All right, so that sounds about right. The next thing I want to do is create markers. Now, uh, this is separated into themes. So you'll have about eight bars of a certain theme, and then it's going to transition to a new one. I want that to happen because it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow me to, to separate my work into chunks. So let's listen to it a little bit. Bef so we'll mark this one as theme one. Sometimes it's an intro, so, um, it depends. In this case, I think it goes, goes right into a theme. Okay, so right there, those four measures, and then on measure six, there's a distinct change right there. In, in the beat, in the bass, in the melody, um, the whole texture of the sound changed. Okay, on measure 14, that's another change. So I'm going to write theme 2 right here on measure 6. By the way, I don't usually like starting at the very beginning of a song. I mean the very beginning of the track, like measure 1. I don't always do that because if I, ev if I ever need to record something, I want to make sure that everything is being captured. And if I accidentally play a little bit before, that note's going to get cut off. So... That's why I usually drag it to measure two. I, I do wish that DAWs could start implementing negative measures. That would be really cool. Uh, maybe the, maybe it does exist. I don't, I don't know. So measure 14, that's the beginning of a new theme. Let's listen to that. See how long that is. Okay, measure 14 didn't sound like a theme to me. It didn't sound like a complete musical idea. Musical idea. It sounded more like a transition. So let's listen to that again. Make sure, make sure that's a right, a correct assessment. Yeah, that didn't sound like a theme. It sounded like a transition. So I'll write transition. And then, where does a new theme begin? So that was the third theme right there. I think it started on measure 18. Yeah. So I'm going to write theme three right here. Oops. Theme three. You know, and it's good to go back and color code these. That way, if there's ever repetitions, it could be really easy to spot where they, where they begin. That way you don't have to recreate works that, that you've already worked on. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this sounds like a theme one again, but I want to I want to verify that. So theme one, I think, was four measures. Yeah, so basically everything after this sounds like it's a repetition of the beginning. So this is a pretty short project, but the client asked me to create a new theme, theme which I've done uh, many times. So after this live stream, if you want to go to his channel, uh, his channel's name is Bridge Capper, Bridge, B-R-D-I, sorry, B-R-I-D-G-E, C-A-P-P-E-R. And they're um, basically recreations of sonic the hedgehog themes and i helped him out with that so um it's pretty cool it's, it's pretty fun work all right so instead of recreating these themes right here i'm going to cut this delete it and it's going to make me feel a lot better knowing that this is all the work i have to do at least for now and then later on i could start creating my own my own theme all right uh so theme one i will make it let's just go ahead and make it red then Theme two, transition, and th these can be whatever colors you want. And then I'll leave that blue at the end. All right. So the first thing I work on is the bass line. Um, bass is really easy to to hear most of the time, unless you have unless you have a poor mix where the guitars and pianos and synths um, don't have that bass cut out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna work theme by theme. It just makes it easier for me. So I'll go ahead and create a MIDI region here. Um, let me see if this is actually the bass I want for now. Um, when I'm working just on getting the notes, I want the sound to be easy on my ears. And this metal sound, this metal guitar is really harsh on my ears. Um, let's see, electric bass. I'm gonna use a J bass for now. This will change. Okay, so let's listen. We have to do some critical listening here. Ba bum ba ba bum. That's what I hear. So here's the beat. It's one, two, three, four, ba bum. So those are eighth notes. So I'm gonna set my grid to eighth notes. It's gonna keep it simple. Ba bum ba ba bum. This is measure two. Da -dum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -da -dum. Ba -bum. Ba -bum. Ba -bum. So it's in the key of C. So A A. Ba -da -da -dum. That's F. Dum ba -ba. Ba -da -da -dum, ba -dum. So right now I'm just I'm just concerned with the notes and the rhythm. Nothing else. No no dynamics. No expression. I I li typically like doing things by layers. So focusing on just the basics, notes and rhythm. Then later on I'll worry about velocity. I'll worry about tra note transitions, um, and then voicing. So. So right there, it repeated the note. Rather than going through this whole process, I'm going to just duplicate it. So I've set this to repeat notes just by pressing D for duplicate. Now, it duplicated it, but it started before the beat four. So I'm just going to hold down command and arrow. I think that's a key, uh, key command that I set. So just, this just makes my job easier. All right, so I made a little mistake. I'm gonna go back. This, these are the things that you wanna correct at the beginning. If there's repetitions, make sure that those rhythms are completely correct. Um, so some of these notes held out, or supposed to hold out. So this one and this one, that's it. Now I can duplicate and it's fine. 
So I'm done with that that baseline on theme one. Now let's go to theme two. And I can go ahead and change the color right here. So let's listen to that. So I'm hearing this. Oh, doo -doo 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 -doo. That's a like that's an octave thing. It's really um, it's really common. Uh, what it is in uh, uh, disco? I think. Ba -da 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 -da. Okay, so that's really easy. So these these are eighth notes. Uh, I'm gonna just repeat it like this. Ba -da. Use the octave mm. key command. This is really easy on in Cubase. Um, you can select the note, hit shift, down, and it's gonna move it by octave. Just without the shift, up and down, it's gonna move it by note. This makes it really easy. Then I'm gonna uh, highlight these two notes, duplicate them. And then I can duplicate it again and then lower them because it goes down. And then it goes down again. And then it goes up. And I think it repeats that bass line. It's pretty simple. Yep. So those are always nice. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, duplicate that. It's really easy. So now I'm done with theme two, bass line, at least for now, just the, just the notes. Right? And next I'm going to do the transition and color code that green. Oops. All right, let's go in and listen to that. This one's only four measures. All right, this one's a little more complex. So this one is a little harder to hear because there's a lot going on. Um, it sounds like it's starting right on the beat, but then all of a sudden it goes... Da -ba -da 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 -da. So I'm going to skip the first note for now. I'll figure it out later. Ba -bum, ba -bum. Ba -bum. Da -bum. One, two, three. Da -da -da -da. I think that's what it does. I think this this is wrong. I think it's something like this. Boom 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 boom. Boom 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 boom. Okay, I, um I think I'm hearing this. All right, so this is going to this is going to repeat as well. Sometimes if I listen to something over and over and I start playing around with notes and then I listen to it again, then I can hear it more clearly and then I don't know it's uh, something about the brain that focuses on the pitches a lot more critically. Um I don't know how it works, but that's how it works. All right, we're done with that one and let's do the last one. This one's eight measures long. And then let me color code that one. So let's measure 18. All right, bump, 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 bump. Sorry, bump, 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 ba da da. Okay, bump, bump, two, 
three, bump, two, three, bump, bump, bump. One, two, three, bump, 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 bump. All right, so part of that is lower, and part of that it just repeats this this section right there. So bum, two, two, uh, this is a little longer. So I'll just go ahead and repeat this, and then these low notes. Uh, let me delete this real quick. That's hard to hear. I don't know if it, if uh, if you can hear it, but um, I don't want to make a mistake on the notes. It sounds like a jumpy octave. Bum, two, three, bum. But then this note, I can't tell if it's an F or an F sharp. And then what does it do after that? All right, this part is different. Bum. Bum, bum. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, bum. That's an F. I can just do it like this too. Ah. Then this note after the F is it's a little unclear to me. It sounds like an A flat, but that doesn't make sense in in this song. Da, 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 da. Sorry, that's what I heard. Da, 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 Dum, bum. Da, 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 da. Da, da. All right, let's see if that matches. All right, I think I got all the notes in rhythm for the bass. For now, let's listen. You know, uh, you know what I'll do? I'll take out the bass from this, uh, from the master track. All right, the next thing we're going to do is replace the drums. I think the bass line sounds accurate. After this, after we've started um, layering each, each instrument, then I'm going to start making sure that they sound realistic or 
at least expressive and musical in and of themselves. Because this bass track by itself does not sound musical to me. It just sounds like like general MIDI. <laughs> And the reason for that is because there's no expression, there's no change in dynamics, there's no variation, there's no human element to it. It's just all perfect timing. And that kills that that organic sound. All right, so let's um I am going to actually get rid of uh get rid of superior drummer because we're not using that this in this track. We want a big drum set and we're using Abbey Road 80s drummer. I really love this kit, by the way. All right, so the first thing I do, um, I'm going to do the same process. Um, I'm going to listen to the kick and the snare. Those are the most important things, kick and snare. All right, everything else, it's pretty much up to me how I'm going to... Um, how I'm going to fill it in and the client might not like it and in that case I would go back and change some things like oh I don't like the hi-hat can you put a ride in there could you put a crash hit right there um or a, or a, t a tom fill so I'm going to listen to those things so let's listen to the the kick and the snare sorry um that was wrong so I'm going to just solo the original track and my drum set. Oh, let me take off the EQ. Sorry about that. So it's cool to just listen to one at a time. So here's the kick. Bump, 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 bump. bump. That's C1. I think that was the same. Oops. Okay, now let's do the snare. And we're going to change the dynamics later on on this too because the snare uh, right now it's set to, let's see, 90 velocity, but listen to the difference between this and this. There's a big difference. All right, so I hear 16th notes on there. Bum, ba -da, right there. And the same rhythm right here. So um, one thing I like to do as well on the drums is to keep the same note length. Um, it just looks better. It just feels better to me. So in this case, I have it set to 16th notes at my smallest uh, value. So um, I think I set this myself in Cubase. I have command equals set to set the note length to the grid value. So I press command equals. And that made all these notes 16 notes in length. All right, let's do the next one. I'm going to go ahead and change that color. So I have bump, bump, bump. Oops, that's on B3. So I'm hearing it's other B. It sounds like a tom. It's so close to the kick sound that it's kind of a little confusing. Boom, boom, da da doom, boom. So 
I need to watch out for that. Was that two two kicks? Yeah. So that repeats. So it's basically the same thing on the kick. Let's see. Let me read some of the comments. So it sounds good. It sounds like a vibe game there. Sonic theme. Yes, it's a Sonic theme. It's um, Mad Gear Zone Act Three. And if you want to, if you want to listen to other works that I've helped out with, uh, go to Bridge Capper's channel. And um, it's probably everything that's been done in the last year and a half. Um, I've I've helped out with, and he'll give me the credit in there, so you can see. Um, listen to the tracks. <laughs> All right, so this one, in this case, I'm, I don't want to just keep drawing these in, penciling these in, so I'm just going to click these, duplicate them, and then hold down Command and right arrow, and then that's the kick right there. Let's do the snare now. All right, so I'm listening to it one measure at a time. I just heard the snare on beat two and three, or, uh, sorry, two and four. So, ba -da -dum. right there. Same thing right here. Same thing right there. Ba -da -dum. All right, now I'm going to actually put in the tom because I think it's really important in this case. So, right here. And I'm going to make a, a judgment on which tom to use. I think I'll use that one. I don't want it to be too high because it sounded like the kick. Go ahead and fill these because it's just repeating. All right, let's listen to that. Um, change this color. I'm going to listen to just the bass and the drums. All right, um, that's fine for me right now. Remember, I, I'm not mixing this yet. Um, it doesn't sound human yet. It just sounds very mechanical. That's okay. By the way, I'm going to break up this video in parts. Uh, so this one, I'll probably be done. I want to at least just get the, the bass, drums, and melody, just the basic layout. And then later on, I'll come back if I have time today and uh, start adding more instruments or start making these a little more realistic. All right, let's just do this. Actually, I need to unmute this. I'm so nervous. All right, that one's a little more complex. So I usually like hearing a measure before. Do ba 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 ba. So it starts with the kick. Let me switch that to eighth notes. Boom, bum, bum, bum. Boom, ba, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom. All 
Up, but and then it, it hits the toms. Up, but up. Up, but up, 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 Oh no, bum ba da ba da. So that's 16 notes. Bum ba da ba da. I'm just gonna do this for now. Bum ba da. Bum ba da. Bum ba da. And let me zoom in a little bit. I think it does the same thing right there. Yeah, that's a really cool bass, uh, really cool drum line. All right. Cool. This is a really cool track, actually. All right. And last theme. I think that was a kick there. Ba -ba -bum. Da -da 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 -da. That's what the toms did. All right, this is a little different right here. Bum. So on this, in this case, I like to look at the MIDI notes that I drew in before and see if there's any differences, just so I know um, kind of where I'm going. Bro, you know how to draw in, in the piano roll and play on the piano. I see why his name's like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, so ba dum, ba dum, ba dum. So this part is a little different right here. Bum, um, bum. So let's listen. Oh man, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> ba -dum, ba -dum. Let's see if this part is a, a repetition of this whole section. It is. It is cool. So I'm gonna take that and duplicate it. So we're done with the drum basic part. Later on, we'll add in the hi-hats, the, the crashes, and it's gonna make this, sound, this track sound really cool. All right, so next I wanna do the melody and I'm gonna finish this video with the melody. And um, I'll, again, I'll be back later to, to start doing more of this. But if you like this kind of work, give, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments, okay? Because um, I want to, if, if I'm not really teaching you anything that you don't know, I want to at least show you a different way to do things. Um, hopefully, I'm helping you out. Okay, so I'm going to mute these. Um, for the melody, I usually like just opening up opening up a piano track. So I'm going to use Piano Tech. This is a, has, has become a go-to of mine, Piano Tech software. It's just really nice. Okay. Um, I just want the notes to the melody. I think a lot of these tracks have a harmony, so I'm gonna try to pick out the melody from the harmony. Let's do theme one again. Sometimes I like playing the melody myself on the piano if I can hear it, and it's just easier to record it. But in this case, I wanna show you how to input the MIDI notes, all right? So let's listen. <laughs> 
So uh, as you can hear, there's lots of parts going on. But I'm hearing da 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 So let me let me go ahead and play that or um, input those notes. So that's an A, and I'm gonna set it to eighth notes. Sorry. Da da. Da da da. Da 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 da, that's C C. And then the bass fills in some of that part. So let me listen to it again. So yes, uh, this repeats, but there's uh, there's like a counter melody. So there's just something else going in the background. Ba -da 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 -da. I'm gonna add that in later. Not probably not in this live stream because um, I'm gonna go to lunch pretty soon. <laughs> And then this is going to extend to the end. By the way, this is something I stole from Logic. Logic has this really cool feature where you um, press, I think you press shift and backspace and it makes it legato. Or if you press backspace, not backspace, I'm sorry, um, backslash, it, it restricts notes so it doesn't overlap over any other ones that are selected. And then shift and backslash is going to do the opposite where it, where it makes it legato, connects it to the very farthest no. Um, I'm going to do that to this note right here. Ba -da -da -da. It's just a really cool way, a really quick way to do that. All right. Next thing. Let's switch this. All right. Da -dum -ba. So it's one ba -dum. That's an A. Bottom, one bottom, bottom, bum, bum, one, two, three, bum. So this is going to be similar. Bottom, 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 bottom. I really like that melody, it's pretty. In Cubase, you most likely have to assign it to a keyboard, key shortcut. Um, oh. So that's repeated. All right, that's done. And I'm probably going to replace that either with a synth or with an electric lead guitar or lead electric guitar which is what the client asked for all right next one this is the transition i love that bum bum Da 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 da. So it repeats. And then the more complex one, I think. Let's change that color to green. And last theme. <laughs> yeah, you know what? There, uh, this is kind of funny. I've done about uh, between 13 to 15 songs for this client and the, uh, when I did the first one, I thought, oh, man, I forgot about this music. I, it, it made me 
nostalgic and took me back to my childhood days. I hadn't really listened to that music in a long time. And it's been cool, like, learning all these themes. You know, I have a great respect for the composer, um, for the original composer. But, yeah, it, video game music is fun, especially the, from this era. All right, let's do the last theme. Da 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 da. Um, actually, it doesn't really matter the octave. Da da da. So that's a uh, AC. Da 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 da. Ba da da da. So that one's. Da, da, da. I think this one actually has more notes. Let's see if it repeats. Hi, Maurice. Okay, so this is different. Da, 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 da. I'll go ahead and do this. So let's delete this. Da 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 da. Okay. So that is the melody. Let's listen to just the instruments that we've added. Now this is going to sound very basic and it's not going to sound great, but I just want to make sure that everything is cohesive. I don't have to leave at this exact moment. Um, I'm going to go over the chords real quick. Um, let me add rhythm guitar. So he wants, um, I usually use Ample Metal Eclipse for rhythm. So th this is really simple because it's in the key of A, or I'm um, sorry, A minor. I, I've, I've made a chromatic chord bank for Ample Metal Eclipse. All right, so let me take off delay. I like setting it to double. Actually, you know what? This is a great moment to save my work. I know this Cubase has automatic save. I always have to save it, and this is something I forget about. Yeah. Um, so power chords. The reason I'm using power chords is because I'm using, using a high gain amp. So in this case, let me see if I can make it sound a little tamer. Nope. All right, so let me go over the chords. Now, usually I don't need to write down the chords. Sometimes I will. And in this case, Cubase has a really cool uh, chord function where you can create a chord track. And if I draw it in, I double click on the X and write down the name of the chord. I think I can play it. Let's see. No, that didn't work. So A minor. That's my first chord. Bum, 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 bum. So uh, when I'm analyzing chords, I'm listening to the melody and the bass line. So that starts on a, an A minor. Ba bum, ba ba bum. And goes to a C right here. Mm, let's see. 
Oh, you know what? I have it set to bar. That's why. There you go. Bah. And that's an F major. Ba da da da. And that's E major. And then it it repeats. That's an A minor. Ba da. The G major. I'll just go ahead and change these like that. That's an F, maybe an F major seven. I, I think. And then it does the G, and I think this all repeats as well. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. So, um, that's an A minor. I can hear that. The A playing in the bass. So that goes to. Ba, 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 da, da, da. That's a C major. And that right there is a diminished chord, some type of diminished chord. Let me get it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, um, okay, diminished chords are kind of weird. Um, this is a C diminished chord, but with a, a D sharp in the bass, or E flat. You can write it anyway. Oh, that's Thriller, never mind. So I'll just go ahead and write C diminished. with a an E flat in the bass. There you go. Oh, that's on the, that's on. I'm trying to move that to to a uh, shorter division. Oops, nope. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see if I can move that. There you go. That repeats. There you go. Oops, I forgot to change this one too. Wait, what's going on here? This these are all supposed to be blue. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. I know uh some of this work is a little boring. Um, like I don't really like writing out the chords, but it helps sometimes. That way I don't mess up on if I'm playing something. That's an A minor. That's a E minor over over G, otherwise known as a G six. So I'll just write G six. Where is a six? There you go. And that is definitely an F major seven. F major seven. Um, it has there you go. That's a G. It repeats that. That's different right there. That's an E. So I'm gonna copy these. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Um, sometimes education is boring if we love music and want to be better. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So what next? Um, I, I know I was going to do something. I was going to do something something to end this video. So I have the kit. Oh, yeah. The chords. That's, that's the whole reason why I made the chords. I'll go ahead and end this video. On, I'll try to be back later. If not, I'll... Um, I think I'll do a live stream tomorrow. So um, I'm going to just create a basic track right here following these. 
And the reason that the chromatic track really helps is because, actually, let me see if I can just lower this so I can see the chords. The reason the chromatic chord bank helps is because it's, um, it's right on the keys. So an A will be an A power chord. So that's really easy to do. So I just have to follow the first note of each chord. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I'm trying not to say um. I, I, it's a pet peeve, of, a pet peeve of mine. So we're gonna do the chord changes first. So A C F E A C F E. A is on. Um, I don't know. It's on A one. A one. So it's showing up right here. So here we have A. We have C. We have F. Um, I can choose this one or I can choose the other one. And then I have E. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see that better. So these are just my chord changes. So there's A. C. F. E. And this is going to change this is going to repeat so i'm going to duplicate this and make sure that this is on beat four or measure four all right next i'm just going to create a, a very basic chug later on i might add some like full strokes like uh, or even the chuckas but right now i just want the basic layout or the skeleton so it's down, down, down. That's going to be G4. G4. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this. Da, 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 da. The fun part, too, is going back to this and adjusting everything so that it starts sounding more human. So let's listen to that real quick. Oops. Okay. I think that I said it to 16th notes. Yep. I should have seen that. What a dummy. All right. Let's set it to eighth notes. Bum, 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 bum. It's a little loud, so I'm going to lower the velocity. Now it sounds weird because that little squeak sounds. So it might be the settings on here. Uh, maybe the effects. All right. So some of the chord changes are in weird spots. I don't like it. Let me solo this real quick. So it's these last notes right here. So I'm going to highlight those, and move them over a little bit, back a little bit. All right, so remember this is just basic. What I don't understand is why some of them sound loud. You notice that it sounds like a full strum. Let's see, bum, bum, bum. I'm gonna separate these a little bit. Yeah, so that should should not be doing that at all. So this is this is a new problem I've never experienced, and this these are the the these are the frustrations that you have to deal with sometimes with uh, with software why it's why it's acting a certain way. So 
So you notice that when I play it, when I solo it, there's no issue at all. However, when I play it along with the other ones, or when I play it like this, and it keeps playing for some reason. But there's no information here. This is this is something that I'm gonna have to tell Ample Sound about. All right, there, there's something going on, something that I'm not seeing. Like, like it's playing a sequencer or something. Oh yeah, it's playing the sequencer. Why is it toggling the sequencer? Oh, you know what? This is probably user error. There's probably a note that I played on here that is that is triggering that sequencer. But I don't know which one. <laughs> this is a mystery. Okay, it's none of those. Sorry, bear with me. Let me move this MIDI track to make sure that there's nothing else there. That is weird. No? I wonder if there is another track that is triggering that. Let's see. My suspicion is that the chord track is was triggering that, but I don't know. Let's see. Guitar reminds me of Rock Lobster. Not to mention Cubase is the only doll that lets you drag your MIDI directly. Yeah, uh, you can drag your MIDI. If they want to learn and be better, they got to watch. That's true. All right. So yeah, I think it was the chord track. <laughs> if that's, I hope it was. <laughs> So this is not an Apple Ample Sound thing. So let me unmute the chord track just to make sure. It was on use monitor. Oh. So this this is this is what was happening. I had the guitar track soloed, right? And I had my chord track set to use monitor tracks. That means that my chord track will play back the chords using one of the instruments that's open in my DAW. And in this case, my Ample Metal Eclipse is open. So the chord track was playing at the same time as my Eclipse guitar, using the Eclipse guitar. That's what it sounded like there were two guitars playing. That's funny. See, there you go. Okay, that makes me feel so much better. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the software and I'm not going crazy. All right. Hello Ruben. Just got the notice you were on. Hey Mark, I'm not going to I'm not going to call you by your username. All right. In this case, um I'm going to do the same thing here. Go ahead and create this strum or downstroke. And then follow the chord changes. This should be pretty quick. Okay, A minor. So this is going to start on A1. A1. So I'm going to go down, down, down. A1. Let me make sure that it's following the bass. And then um, sometimes I tend to go ahead and EQ some of this. That way it doesn't sound like it's interfering with other instruments or it's easier to hear. That's a G right there. So I'm going to go ahead and... and F and then G again. Right, 
that's done. Well, for now, anyway. And then just go ahead and work on the transition. This one is, there's going to be a little problem, I think, with the cord. Because all the cords are power, power cords, which are either open fifths or open fourths. Uh, perfect fifths or perfect fourths. Uh, diminished cord, by, by its very nature, is a diminished fifth. So uh, C, the, a C above, a uh, fifth above C would be G, but the highest note is G flat on this or F sharp. So that's a tritone or an augmented fourth, if you will. Um, so I might have to add that diminished chord in there. So let's go ahead and create the strum. That's going to be on like we did on the other ones. We'll try it. We'll try it out. Um, so I'm going to do a A, G, F sharp, A, G, F sharp. There you go. Actually, the bass is going to C. That goes back. And then we're going to do it again here. Bum, bum. Um. Okay, and then we'll finish it with this. Write in those notes. And then write in the chord changes. A. So in this case, I'm probably going to delete those notes that where there's silence. Bum. Let's read the comments. They got everything else so good. FL Studio need to change that routing. If they do that, they will pretty much solve issues. You know, I've tried FL Studio. I know it's very popular. It the, their whole way of thinking is so different from from what I'm used to. I I, I had a headache honestly trying to figure it out. Um, and I'm pretty good at figuring out DAWs. All right, so let's listen to what we have so far. Again, this is going to sound like crap because it's just the bare bones. Well, friends, that's going to be the end of this video. I want to keep these in short chunks. I'm not going to do any more work before um, before I go live. Okay, I promise. I'll try to be back today. Let me know if you want me to do this today, later on today, or tomorrow in the morning, and I will do that. Um, I want to show you how I start shaping this to become more realistic, and it's going to just sound more musical. It's really cool once I start adding the little details, like the little percussion here and there, the the hits, the, the synth, the pads, all that stuff. And then I start mixing it to where it sounds more balanced. Um, I want to show you my process. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And just be, be um, on the lookout for the, those notifications because I'm going to schedule another, another live stream.
Um, I don't like being on my headphones for that long because it's fatiguing, but I'm going to do this for you. Uh, if you want to support my channel, I think there is a donate button uh, in the chat. I'm not sure. If you want to help me out, that's going to help pay for the bills, pay for the lights, um, new equipment so that I'm providing this content. I want to be on more often. I, I don't know if you've noticed I've been posting more. But anyway, uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, if you're new here, please um, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about this. Friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.